Hey guys, it's Braindog here. How's everybody doing out there? I, I know it's been a, a long time um, since the last episode. Jeez, I, I don't know why this is so difficult to record today. My heart is racing. I'm sweating. I feel so much anxiety right now. And, uh, you know, I've been making videos on YouTube now for uh, over 10 years. And, and th this is one of the first videos that I've ever made that uh, I really I really didn't want to make. And I don't want to make because um, today I have to talk about a very traumatic event that happened in my life last month. And um, I feel like today I'm ready to talk about it. But, oh man, it's just, it's so hard. And um, I almost just want to want to stop recording now and just and just go hide again and and um and maybe try to do this uh, next week or something but I want to try and make some headway today I want to try and get out of um the place that I've been over the last few weeks and I want to try get back into a more positive frame of mind and more importantly to get back to doing my work which is very important because what I am meant to be doing on this planet is providing content for you guys to enjoy and escape your lives with and um, if I'm not working I'm not helping and I need to get back to helping and um, and so I'm just going to push through today and whatever happens in this recording happens and um, guys you know if you are used to consuming Ren Dog videos for happiness and uh, and vic vicarious enjoyment maybe skip this one because this is more of a real life video we're going to be talking about some um, some heavy stuff today that's happened to me and um, if you'd rather not uh, you know go through all of that with us then I, I totally understand please uh, wait for you know the next couple of episodes where we'll we'll get back to normal Hermacraft stuff oh man I'm just rambling because I, I it's I don't want to uh, it's hard for me to face the truth you know it's hard for anybody to face the truth when we go through a traumatic event and um, you know before I, I get started talking about this today guys um i just want to say yeah we're going to be doing some some work on the server today we're going to be working on a section of the race course here um while while we go through all of this i don't know how long this video is going to be so i'm just going to work out here and whatever gets done gets done but today is not about minecraft it's not about uh hermacraft it's it's about um it's about me and 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 something that I need to to really work through so that I can get back to a, a more normal st uh, state of being and a more normal state of mental health and whatnot. Sometimes I even forget that I also am just a human <laughs> and not rain dog, you know? Um, and sometimes I feel like almost ashamed to talk about human stuff with you guys because, you know, what I produce is supposed to be like a show, you know? It's not supposed to be a re real life. It's supposed to be something else and um yeah I, I always feel a little bit weird when uh, i start talking to you guys about um you know real life stuff but like i say th this video is not really about um anything other than helping myself to take that step through a barrier that i that i find myself at uh, i'm i'm stopping myself progressing forward because of this immense sadness that i'm engulfed in and I think to break through that sadness, I just need to take a step. And if that means making a video where I ramble for a while, then that is at least a step forward. And, um, you know, you can't defeat a demon without throwing the first punch. And I guess this video is that first punch. And it's going to be a complete mess of a video. It already is. Um, but anyway, let's let's get to it. Um, I have something really, really sad to announce, and um, I am just going to read the tweet that I sent last month, because um, I think that's that's going to be the only way that I can really get through it. So just give me a moment to catch my breath, and um, I'll read the tweet. It is with immeasurable sadness and grief that I announce the passing of my little boy, Obi-Wan Alfonso Kenobi. Master Jedi. For the past few months, his health has steadily deteriorated, and despite our best efforts, last week we made the horrific decision to end his suffering. He passed away peacefully wrapped in his favorite blanket in his papa's arms on April 19, 2023. I am utterly broken and miss my little boy so much. 
it will take me a long while to find peace in my heart again. But I try to find solace in knowing my boy is no longer in pain. He will always be by my side for long walks through the forest, or on my lap for cozy nights snuggled up together on the couch. Rest in peace now, my handsome boy. Your papa will always love you. As you can probably tell, this topic is extremely painful for me to even think about, let alone talk about, and um, I'd like to just leave this here, if that's okay, guys. I don't want to talk any more about this. Maybe later on in the year when I'm feeling a bit better about everything, we can talk a bit more about Obi, but I just want to leave it there, and um, I hope that's okay. Oh, man. You know, guys, for the last uh, week or so, I've been uh, I've been writing notes about this episode. Um, you know, talking about writing writing about what I'm gonna say today, and <laughs> well, I, I haven't followed any of the notes. You know, um, I, I don't think that this is the kind of video that you can actually plan. Um, you know, you just have to you just have to go for it. I'm already feeling a little bit better, um, a bit like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders having recorded the last uh, few minutes. You know, this is something that I've been really stressing about for the last couple of weeks is just being able to read that tweet uh, without uh, breaking apart, <laughs> which clearly um, I, I did break apart a little bit there, so sorry about that. But um, yeah, managed to get managing to get through that has actually helped me feel a bit better. So um, thank you for for sitting through that. I'm sure it was unbearably uncomfortable, but um, we've made it through that hurdle for the episode. So so that's great. Um, you know what? Let's lift the spirits a bit today because I, I do have some good news to share with you. Also, uh, you know, it, it's uh, it's been a while since the last episode where I talked about having to move house, and of course, uh, shortly after I received that email. Um, you know, I, I, I had to deal with um, the tragedy of, of losing my boy and, and uh, you know, it all sort of piled on top of itself. All these things piled on top. And uh, there, there were some other things going on in my life too that I don't talk about because they're, they're private. And uh, basically all the, all, all the bad things happened in the same week almost, it felt like. And, uh, you know, in my life, I, I've been pretty good at handling traumas uh when they come by themselves <laughs> you know being a, a a real life hermit type person i've always been a very solitary human being i've always been on my own for most of my life and i've always been able to manage trauma when it comes in small doses so to speak when it's one thing at a time uh but this year at the start of 2023 a whole bunch of uh, traumatic events occurred at the same time and the passing of my boy was the the climax of it all it was the straw that broke the the camel's back, so to speak, and and um, yeah, it, it really took me out. And um, uh, after after uh, after that day, I I disconnected from the internet for a bit, and I tried to steady my ship a little bit, try to get into a good mental spot because you know while these things that happened to me were tragic, real life doesn't stop, and um, there was still the the issue of having to move out of this house. My my landlord gave me some gave me notice to leave. Um, and I've got some good news about all of that also um, that I can share with you today. So the first bit of good news is that I have actually managed to find a place and I have signed the contract and I have paid the the rent. I had to pay half a year rent up front because of the, you know, uh, the tremendous urgency of the situation of me having to find a place and that's how I was able to secure this place was paying a lump sum up front and um got the got the the lease signed and met the landlords and and uh, you know they're fabulous people and we're going to have a great relationship moving forward and the house is as good of a place that I could find in the couple of weeks that I had to find it and uh, I I'm very excited about um, moving into the into it at the in the last week of May, which is when I'm going to be moving, which is about two weeks from now. Um, so that's very exciting. I, I also wanted to share some news with you about my current landlord because um, the last time I spoke about leaving, I, I I mentioned that my landlord had given me notice, and perhaps I came across as being 
a bit upset about it or angry with the landlord about it. And I suppose at the time, maybe I was. Um, but actually, uh, it's interesting because this is going to link back to one of the key things I want to talk about today. And uh, that is the fact that most of us in this world have stuff going on in our lives that nobody else knows about, or at least that very few people know about, right? And we're all very quick to jump and judge each other without actually empathizing. And while at first I might have been upset with my landlord, uh, my current landlord, I actually spoke to them uh, about the situation. I did email them and uh, we had a chat about it all. And it turns out that my current landlord is going to go uh, and do humanitarian work in Sudan in the war zone. And they want to ensure that their family uh, has a has a place to live here in the UK while they are in South Sudan, South Sudan. And, um, you know, that really immediately dissipated any anger or dissatisfaction that I had. And I completely understand. Uh, being a family person, they wanted to ensure that their family was looked after while they went to a very dangerous part of the world. And in some ways, me relinquishing the, this home for them is me doing my small part, you know, inadvertently to help out in Sudan too, because I'm ensuring that my current landlord has peace of mind before they go over there. And perhaps that'll help them do a better job while they're over there too. And so I have no resentment or anger toward uh, my current landlord and I wish them and their family nothing but the best for the future. And, um, you know, it's interesting because like I say, it's it certainly uh, reminded me to, to not always judge situations so quickly and to remember that we all have something going on in the background, right? Uh, you know, Hermitcraft is, is such an interesting metaphor almost for reality uh, if, in our society in some ways because, you know, you guys watch us hermits and uh, for people like me, I try and make my videos as positive as possible because I believe that you and I, we have a deal, right? And that deal it consists of you guys supporting me by watching my videos, subscribing on Twitch, being a Patreon, and all of that. You, you know, you you help me to live and provide financial means for me to uh, to continue to produce. And what I give you guys is a vicarious escape from reality, a place that you can you can come and live in Hermitcraft for a bit, and you don't have to worry about your own stuff that's happening in your own lives. And you know, uh, of course, you all have stuff that's happening in your own lives. Um, and that's something that we really, really need to remember. And, uh, you know, it's something that, that I'm trying to remember also. As I get older, I, I try and be more empathetic because I think it does make you a better human being overall. You know, I want to expand a bit on this point because um, this alludes to a very important lesson that I learned from one of my very best friends many years ago. And it's a lesson that kind of stuck with me ever since he, he taught me this. And, uh, you know, you don't often take your friends very seriously, especially ones that are very close to you. But every now and then they'll say something that almost changes your life or almost changes your perspective on reality. And uh, this was exactly an occasion where that happened. And uh, for those of you guys who uh, have been watching for a very long time, for those of you guys who have been watching since before I was in Hermitcraft, you will know what I'm talking about now. But I think the majority of you watching this are probably new viewers um, that joined me during my times on Hermitcraft. But before I was in Hermitcraft, I was still doing YouTube maybe four or five years before I joined Hermitcraft. And during that period, I went through a, another very traumatic section of life where um, I went through an incredibly um, damaging breakup, which resulted in me ending up in crippling debt and very horrendous depression and I even quit YouTube for about a year and a half just to try and get myself back to a place where I was functioning correctly. I, I quit YouTube to pay my debt off by working a couple of jobs in London and um, I just, you know, worked seven days a week for a year or two just to pay off the debt and then get back to be doing YouTube again. Uh, but that's a long and uh, sad tale for another day. The story, though, <laughs> that I'm trying to talk about is that during this time, um, when the breakup happened, I fell into a very deep depression where I locked myself away from the world. The only people that I spoke to was my mum and my, my brother and my dad. I just spoke to my family. I didn't speak to anyone else. And I, I kind of disappeared for a while. Maybe I disappeared for uh, three or four months or something like that. And um, 
my my friends were really worried about me because I wouldn't answer their calls or their their text messages or on Facebook. I was just ignoring everybody, um, you know, while I was trying to deal with with all of this that was happening to me. And um, eventually, after a few months, one of my best friends, you know, somehow convinced me to go out and and have a steak with them in town. And I went and joined them for a, for lunch in town. And, uh, you know, they said to me, dude, what is going on with you? Like, w- where have you been? Why haven't you contacted anybody? And I said to them, well, you know, I went through, I've, I've had this, the most horrendous time in my life. I, I had this insane breakup. And can you believe what happened to me? It's just so tragic. Like, I mean, list, you know, and I listed all of these terrible things that had happened to me. And very interestingly, instead of getting sympathy from my, my friend, I got something that was kind of the, it was the opposite. It was almost like tough love sympathy because what he said to me really changed my life in many ways. And he said to me, mate, we're all going through hard stuff right now. You're not the only one that's struggling. We also are going through tough times and we also need support from you. And in that moment, I realized that, yes, I was kind of being a selfish friend in that moment. Perhaps I wasn't in the best place to provide support for my friends. But the reality was that just because I was going through tough times doesn't mean that they were also going through tough times. And that really altered my perspective on things and really made me uh, basically turned on the empathy uh, part of my brain, I think. And ever since then, I've, I've been a lot more aware of these situations and no more so than today. You see, I'm very aware that right now, this is a video about me basically complaining about some really heavy stuff that happened to me, right? A little bit like that day that I joined my friend for a steak and I was telling him about all of my my woes and my tragedies. And I'm very much aware that I'm doing that exact same thing right now. I'm telling you guys about something that terrible that happened to me all at the same time while being aware that every single one of you is going through something really tough right now too. And I am not making this video for your sympathy. In fact, I hope that we can get something positive out of this video. Instead of me just sitting here and uh, being sad about what was obviously a tragedy in my life, I want to try and flip this. And I want to try and maybe turn all of this tragedy that I've experienced into maybe helping some of you guys out there who might be dealing with trauma right now also. And if I can help one of you, even just one, then at least this video is not just 50 minutes of sadness. At least something positive can come out of this. And I want to spend the rest of this episode in a more positive area. And I want those of you guys who are maybe struggling right now with a a traumatic experience that that you are trying to deal with, stick around. Let me try and talk you through how I've been managing the various traumas that have occurred in my life. And not being a psychologist or professional (laughs) mental health person uh, in any way, uh, I do hope, however, that my experiences might help you in some way manage what uh, you perhaps are going through right now too. And um, I want to talk about something that over the the last 10 years of my life, I have come to refer as the wave. And the wave is the mental exercise that I personally use to handle traumatic memories in particular. You know, trauma, um, whatever the trauma may be, whether it's losing a loved one, losing a pet, getting injured, you know, uh, PTSD, any of these different types of traumas, they're all triggered by memory right? When we remember back to those specific moments. And, you know, what I've come to understand is that you can never get rid of the trauma. The trauma happened and it will be a part of you forever. But what you can do is you can manage the specific moment when you remember that traumatic event. And if you can manage that memory correctly, you can help yourself a lot and and you can can really start to, to manage your feelings a little bit better and and slowly over time begin to heal. So what is the wave? Well, um, let me just get a sip of my tea over here, guys. It's getting cold. 
I've been uh, I've been recording now for about um, 30 minutes or so. And um, I'm feeling a lot better now, guys. Thank you so much for those of you guys who are still here and listening. I do appreciate you getting through all of this. And um, let's talk about the wave. It's kind of a difficult concept for me to talk about because it's a me thing. It's a mental health tool that I've developed for myself. So I'm going to try and explain what the wave is with a story. I think that's always a good way to try and explain these things. And this story is going to begin all the way back to when I was about six years old, six to ten years old, that sort of time frame. And this story takes place every December in South Africa. Now, December in South Africa is summertime, and many South Africans head to the, to the, the seaside for summer. And my family was no exception. Every single summer, my family and I, my mum and my dad and my brother and I, we would head to the coast and we would spend four weeks in the sun and the sea and uh, have a wonderful summer holiday every single year. And, um, you know, that's something that I've always been very grateful to my parents about because those holidays were times that, that made me into the young teenager that I became and really was an amazing time that my brother and I spent bonding with each other because my parents were also on holiday and while they were busy, my brother and I would spend most of our time together also. It was also a time, however, that started to define who I would eventually become in life, which is a real life hermit, a quite a solitary human being. Because even at that young age, um, I would be spending quite a lot of time by myself during summer holidays. My brother was two years younger than me, so he was a little bit smaller. And uh, sometimes, you know, he wouldn't want to go and play uh, on the beach and he would stay at home with his with mum and dad. Um, and when that would happen, when my brother didn't want to come to the beach, I would just go to the beach by myself. And there was a game that I used to play that um, I remember to this day because in some ways, this game not only defined my nature, but in very many ways became a metaphor for many of the, the, the moments that I've experienced so far in my adult life. And this game was called Kick the Wave, <laughs> I suppose. And essentially what the game was is I would go into the, the ocean and stand at sort of knee height water. Um, and it, this was only possible when the tide was in a specific time where there would be little shore breakers, you know, and by little, I mean maybe two or three foot waves as tall as I was at the time that would break closer to the shore. And the game was for me to... Uh, to, to fly kick the wave or to do a roundhouse kick on the wave or to punch the wave as it came in. Basically, I was I was playing karate versus the wave, right? The wave would come in and I would take a pose, a karate pose, and I would nunchuck that wave's neck, you know, as it came past and so on. And basically, I was just playing karate kid in the ocean. Um, but something that I, I realized over time, especially when the waves were much bigger and not just little ones, uh, this was a game that I would consistently play, of course, over the years. And as I got older and bigger, I would go deeper into the ocean and the waves would get stronger. Um, and it got to a point where the waves would become so strong that if I attacked them too late, that is to say, if the wave had already started breaking when I began my ninja attack, the wave would just grab me and drag me down. And for a few seconds of time, because I was so small and light, the power of the water would overwhelm me, right? And I would be chucked around and I would bounce on the on the floor of the of the ocean, you know, like on the on the, the, the seabed, and the wave would spit me out onto the shore and I'd lie there breathless but laughing because, you know, when you're a kid sometimes you enjoy a bit of pain here and there, you know? I don't know, it's a weird thing, but I kinda enjoyed that feeling of being slammed into the sea bottom and thrown around like a <laughs> like a an empty can in the, in the ocean you know um but over time of course as i got bigger and bigger i eventually became so big that i the, the waves couldn't chuck me around so it was only really applicable to when i was a small kid but what i realized later on and especially 10 years ago um when i was going through that first traumatic event that i that i told you guys about earlier there was a moment that I realized, hang on, this wave situation from my childhood, this is actually kind of applicable uh, to helping me deal with this trauma that I'm experiencing right now. So before I 
explain how the wave fits into dealing with trauma, I, I want to talk a little bit about uh, a well-known method of dealing with a traumatic memory, right? So right now, what we're talking about is how do you handle the moment where you remember a traumatic experience? And for the sake of this whole thing, um, let me talk about a hypothetical, right? Let's say that I experienced um, a traumatic moment in the ocean, right? Let's say I was attacked by a giant sea turtle in the ocean. And it was a very tra tra dramatic moment in my life. Later on in life, when I remember back to that moment that the sea turtle took a chunk out of me, that memory itself triggers a bunch of fear, sadness, anxiety, all of the negative emotions. And of course, that's why people experience things like PTSD. Now, the reason that these memories are so impactful on us is that human beings have incredibly powerful imaginations. And especially as you experience these traumatic events firsthand, when you remember them, your imagination is so powerful, it is capable of rebuilding that bit of reality in your mind, so much so that it almost feels like a dream, that it almost feels like it's happening to you again. You can feel the feelings, you can smell the smells, you can taste the tastes, you can feel exactly what it was like in that moment of trauma. And that's why it's so difficult for us to, uh, to manage these kind of traumatic memories. Now, a well-known technique to help with dealing with traumatic memories is to try and imagine yourself watching the moment from outside of your body, right? I know it sounds all a bit weird and wishy-washy, but something that I would suggest trying if you are yourself struggling with a traumatic memory. The next time you feel that memory coming, put yourself outside of the moment. So in my example of being attacked by the giant sea turtle, I will imagine myself watching the moment from a drone that's flying above the ocean, right? And I am in the drone and I'm watching down. I can see myself in the water. I can see the giant turtle coming in. I can see the moment of impact. And what that does is it separates your imagination from the actual reality of the event. Because now your imagination is being forced to think about being a drone or think about picturing the whole scene from the outside and it's not uh, using its energy to reproduce that moment of reality. It's quite a well-known um, method to deal with traumatic memories. And with this method in mind, what I've managed to do over the last few years is use that wave that I used to fly kick as a child as my way to trick my imagination into not putting myself in that moment of trauma. And this is how I do it. When I feel that traumatic memory coming up, like for example, the memory of the day that I had to say goodbye to my little boy, the memory of him being in my arms in that moment, I can feel that wave coming up on me. I can see it approaching. And the first thing that I try and do these days, if I can catch it in time, is to imagine myself as being six years old again in the ocean. And I can see that wave coming toward me, that wave of pain, that wave of sadness. It's coming. And I know that when it hits me, it is gonna slam me into the ocean bottom, throw me around like a can in the ocean. I'm gonna knock my head on the sand. I'm gonna be underwater. I'm not gonna be able to breathe. I'm gonna have to hold my nose in my mouth as I get thrown in the undertow. But eventually, the wave's energy is going to dissipate and wash me up onto the shore where I can catch my breath again and maybe have a little chuckle at how brutal that whole experience was. But I was now on dry land, wet, covered in sand in places that there shouldn't be sand and feeling a little bit better having defeated that wave. And you know what? The next thing that I do is I go straight back into the ocean to fight the next one because... Those waves don't stop coming, just like ocean waves never stop slamming into the shore. So the waves of our lives never stop approaching us either. And yeah, that's the method that I use to trick my imagination into not reproducing that extremely traumatic moment that I said goodbye to my little boy. But instead, in that moment of sadness as it engulfs me, I think about that wave. 
and I realize that the wave is going to overwhelm me, that there is no way for me to fight it, and that all I have to do is hold my nose, hold my breath, and wait, and I will come out the other side in one piece. Because a wave's energy is finite. It just simply does not have the energy to throw you around forever, and it will let go of you. And so will trauma, and so will traumatic memories. They will let go of you. You just have to make sure that you're able to manage them correctly. And by finding some sort of imagination method to disconnect your memory from your imagination in those moments of overwhelming surge, I think that'll really, really help you guys be able to manage um, those traumatic memories that you might have. You know, the more I thought about the wave, the, the more that I realized that um, the wave is not just about those moments of traumatic memories. In fact, the wave concept or the concept of the wave can be applied to an entire lifetime. And in fact, I have no doubt that uh, this theory is probably already exists out there. You know, I'm not a particularly smart person, so I'm sure that this, um, this whole wave thing has been thought about by like a surfer or something before, but I don't know. Uh, it's something that I, you know, I've come to my own conclusions about. And what I've realized is that, yeah, while there are little waves in our lives, right? I've just had to karate chop a couple of um, little waves this year, you know, with all of these things that happened to me. But at the same time, there's bigger waves that have been happening also in my life, right? So, for example, when I went through that really difficult breakup many years ago, that wave lasted about a year. You know, that was a big boy. And uh, that wave smashed me into the tarmac. You know, there was there was no sea sand underneath that wave. That was like a that was a, a city wave. You know, that was a that was a tsunami wave that smashed me into the tarmac. And that took a long time for the energy of that wave to dissipate. And even within that wave, there were other little waves that happened too, right? And you know, perhaps there's even bigger waves than that. Waves that are larger than a year. Maybe a wave can last half a lifetime or in fact maybe we can look at our entire lives as just one large wave with our final moments on this earth being that moment where we're washed up onto the shore and we take that deep breath after being in the undertow um, and out of control right now of course this wave analogy or metaphor or whatever it is that you want to call it it works really well for me because it's something that i can relate to from my childhood you know uh, it's easy for me to remember what it felt like roundhouse kicking that wave in the face and then that wave smashing me down and, you know, holding me under for a while. I can I can feel the power of that wave when I close my eyes right now. And, and so it's easy for my imagination to make that link when I'm dealing with a traumatic memory. Um, so, you know, I'm not suggesting that you use my wave analogy to deal with your uh, traumatic memories, but try find one of your own, right? There's many, many things that are the same of, as waves. Um, you know, you're trying to find something that is very powerful but runs out of energy. You're trying to find something that's extremely powerful and can overwhelm you but will run out of energy in the end. Uh, anything like that is what you're looking for, right? Like um, when it comes to something that has happened in your own life. For example, I don't know, maybe if you've skydived before, you might be able to relate to that sort of feeling where you know you're strapped to somebody you're strapped to the instructor and that means you have no control about when you jump out of the plane and the instructor leaps you out of the plane and you are caught in the undertow right caught in that fear and panic that you might be destroyed by what has just happened by by this thing that has happened to you that is completely out of your control and then the parachute opens and you are washed up onto the shore and when you land, you can take a breath and realize, hey, everything's okay. Let's do that again. It's probably quite a tedious example, but you know what I'm trying to say here, guys, right? I mean, the key takeaway from this whole thing is that for those of you guys struggling with traumatic memories, try find a way to trick your imagination into creating a different scenario to the actual traumatic scenario that it loves to build for you when you're remem remembering that traumatic event. Um, the easiest way, of course, as I said earlier, is to picture yourself outside of the event looking down. Or if you can find something very personal to you, like I did with the wave, that can be even better uh, because that's something that your imagination can relate to very specifically and, and, and uh, it can be a much more powerful 
way to, uh, to deal with those traumatic memories. Now guys, I have no idea if any of this has been helpful to you. Um, I really hope it has because I did not want this video to just be a woe is me, my life is so terrible type of affair. I really wanted to try and add some value for some of you guys uh, out there who might need a bit of help too. And uh, well, at the same time, this was a very important video for me to make to break through the barrier that I have been faced with these last few weeks. You know, I've been extremely scared to talk about this and to talk about Obi uh, in front of you guys. And every single time I've sat down to start recording, I've stopped myself and I've just not been able to break through that that wall. Uh, and today is a very important day in my in my um, healing process because today I was able to do what three days ago was impossible. And I all I've done is write notes in this book. I've got pages and pages of notes for for this video. And and um, you know I might as well chuck this video into this. Uh, I might as well chuck this book into the sea because I haven't used any of the notes today. But that doesn't matter. This video was not supposed to be a high quality Hermitcraft production. This video was supposed to be, I, I guess, maybe the end of my wave. Maybe this video is me washing up onto the shore and taking a breath and standing up, looking back into the ocean and getting ready to charge in and face the next wave. Today, the grip that wave had on me has released. And uh, for the first time since the 19th of April, I feel like I'm touching reality again. If you've made it this far, thank you for watching. and. I want to say a very special thank you to everybody over the last few weeks who have been sending words of love and support. I know that I haven't been around. Um, I've been disconnected from the internet, sorting out my my house situation and dealing with my my wave. But I'm making my way back to you guys one step at a time. And just knowing that you guys are there waiting for me on the other side of this wave, that's all the motivation that I need to get myself back on my feet.